Hello everyone, I'm Ken Davis, President and CEO of the Mount Sinai Health System. And today I'm with two of our experts in infectious disease who are going to give you, share with you, their views and insights on some very important COVID questions. So, if you've been fully vaccinated, are you still protected from COVID? Absolutely, Dr. Davis, the vaccines work. In the United States, over 97% of persons hospitalized with COVID and 99% of those who die from COVID are unvaccinated. No vaccine though is 100%. Um, I like to quote Catherine Wu, a journalist from the Atlantic who equated the vaccine to an umbrella. An umbrella will keep you dry for the most part, but you can still get wet in a bad storm. So the current vaccines are highly effective, even for the circulating variants, but we do expect there will be breakthrough infections in some individuals. I encourage everyone to get vaccinated. All right. So tell us a little about the most recent studies with the best data and what takeaways we should make take from them. All right, so many of the recent studies have been focused on the Delta variant uh, for obvious reasons. And what they have shown is that the Delta variant is about 1.5 to twofold more transmissible than previous variants. Um, and this is why it's spreading rapidly and, and why it's taken over uh, compared to other variants in, in uh, the USA and in other regions in the world as well. So I think the fortunate uh, aspect is that there is currently no evidence that it causes more severe illness compared to any of the other variants. Uh, and multiple studies have also shown that the available vaccines remain highly effective against the Delta variant. Uh, so there was a recent study by Public Health England uh, that showed that people that are fully vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine, so that have two doses, um, have a similar level of protection against Delta as the previous Alpha variant uh, at about 88%. Uh, now, there have been a few other studies, uh, and a notable one has come from Israel, where data has shown that the, the Pfizer vaccine, fully vaccinated individuals with the Pfizer vaccine, um, uh, are less protected against symptomatic illness at around 64%. Uh, and similar data from the UK has, has shown similar numbers for uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine as well. But I think what is very important to point out in these studies is that uh, in the same data, they've also shown that these vaccines remain highly protective against severe illness, hospitalization and death uh, at about 90%. Uh, and the same data has been shown for, for other vaccines such as Janssen uh, as well, uh, as well as Moderna. And I think the takeaway really is that vaccines are, are highly effective and they keep you out of hospitals and they keep you, uh, they keep you safe. All right, so let's just elaborate a little bit on the Delta variant. With that variant, are you convinced we're still safe with what we have? And what about children? Are they safe? So you and your children are safer if you are vaccinated and you take precautions like using hand sanitizer. Um, to date, as Dr. Van uh, Bakel just mentioned, the, the three FDA authorized vaccines all have been reported to be effective against the Delta variant. Um, as stated, the, you know, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines um, offer, you know, more than 80% effectiveness in preventing symptomatic COVID and, and over 95% effectiveness in preventing hospitalization. As Dr. Van Bockel noted, the J&J &J vaccine, like the AstraZeneca, may be a little bit less, but still the J&J &J shows robust um, results in preventing hospitalizations. And while the Delta variant is more contagious, it does not appear to be more dangerous to children than any of the other variants. On July 19th, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended that all children over the age of two wear masks when returning to school this year. And, and regardless of their vaccination status, and that's because of the high likelihood that they could be exposed to those unvaccinated. The best way to assure your children under 12 are protected is to encourage all family and friends to get vaccinated and take precautions to avoid exposure to COVID. Well, we've talked a lot about variants. It seems they pop up all the time. Can we expect another variant? And if so, how does that impact us as a society and what about as an individual? 
So the coronavirus will continue to change as it infects uh, people. And it's really part of the normal evolutionary process of, of any virus. And the reason is that as the virus makes new copies of itself, it can introduce small errors into its genetic code, uh, much like you can make typos when you're copying a piece of text, for example. So that means that new variants emerge all of the time. Um, now it's important to note that most of these variants are neutral, and that means that they don't really change their characteristics compared to previous uh, variants of the virus. But some, such as the Delta variant, uh, they can have characteristics that allow them to spread more rapidly or to affect uh, vaccine efficacy. And it's important that we detect those variants of concerns uh, early on. So I think as a society, it's important that we, that we remain prepared. Uh, I think a lot of it has been done in the past year to really ramp up, for example, sequencing capacity, uh, to do surveillance at many different locations, and that really allows us to detect novel variants uh, early. I think another thing that we can do as a society and as individuals uh, is to reduce the chance uh, of, of novel variants appearing. And the way we can do that is to essentially prevent novel infections from occurring. And that sort of harks back to the message that it's really important for everyone to get vaccinated because if we can keep the rate of novel infections low, we essentially reduce the opportunities for the virus uh, to, uh, to have novel emerging variants. And then finally, I think as individuals, we should remain cautious, uh, avoid unnecessary risks. Uh, we're all tired of the pandemic, but uh, unfortunately the virus certainly isn't. Well, okay, let me now ask three questions in one, which are all kind of related. Are we gonna need a booster? And if so, when? What do you do if you're immunocompromised? And when, if ever, should you be measuring your antibodies? So at this time, it's premature to recommend a booster vaccine. Uh, we still do not know how long protection from the initial vaccination may last. Hence, placebo-controlled trials are underway now to assess whether a booster shot given to those who are fully vaccinated reduces the number of persons who get COVID compared to those who receive placebo. Um, for your second question on immunosuppressed individuals, Immunosuppressed, fully vaccinated people represent about 44% of the hospitalized COVID breakthrough cases, even though they only make up less than 3% of the U.S. adult population. They are more likely to become severely ill and potentially transmit to others. Nevertheless, it's still unknown if giving a booster vaccine will reduce these breakthrough infections. As we learned yesterday, a panel of advisors for the C CDC supported the use of booster vaccine with the caveat, should the FDA authorize, for those who have certain immunocompromised conditions, such as persons who have received organ transplants or have cancer, HIV, or other conditions requiring medications that impair their immune system. I want to emphasize that the FDA has not authorized the booster vaccines for anyone yet. So we cannot offer them at this time, but stay tuned um, as this may change soon, especially for the immunosuppressed individuals. In regards to antibody testing, we do not recommend antibody testing as they do not inform who is protected. The FDA and the CDC advise against the use of the COVID uh, the SARS-CoV-2 antibody test results to evaluate for immunity or protection from COVID-19 after vaccination. And this is because not all commercial tests check for the antibodies we make in response to vaccines. And even for those that do, we still do not know what level of antibodies afford protection. Okay, so my last question is about data sharing. How important is it for our states to be sharing data in order to manage the pandemic? So I think data sharing among states has really been essential throughout this pandemic. Um, and it's, it's really important because if we understand where surges are happening, uh, we know where current resources are needed. It also helps inform sort of public health measures uh, related to that. Um, in addition to that, sharing genomic data is also key, and this has really been helped greatly by uh, public databases such as GISAID and GenBank, uh, 
that have really accumulated millions and millions of viral sequences that really help us understand the spread of the virus uh, across the world. So early on, this has helped us track how the virus has spread across the globe um, and across the nation. Currently, it's also really been crucial in helping detect novel variants early, especially when sequence data is generated rapidly and disposited rapidly in databases so that we have sort of a real-time view of how the virus is spreading. Um, and it allows for early detection of, of novel variants and, and allows us to make informed uh, decisions about mitigation efforts. So in this respect, I should also say that it's very important not just to share data among states, but also to share data globally. And the reason for this is that many of these variants uh, don't necessarily emerge here in the United States, but they have emerged uh, all across the world, as has been shown for alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. Um, so it's better that we detect uh, novel variants early at their source rather than wait for them to essentially show up on our shores. So on that aspect, uh, North America and Europe are doing a lot of surveillance now, so there is good sequence coverage in those regions. Uh, but other areas uh, across the globe still remain underrepresented. And I think that's an imbalance that needs to be addressed in the future as well, uh, especially given that so many of the same areas also have uh, reduced access to vaccines compared to, compared to the West. Well, thank you both for your insights and guidance. Thank you.